Okay, this is about wiring up circuit boards. Now, most circuit boards come with groupings of five. And the way I've got this oriented up and down, five, and then they've got these long rows on the top. I'm going to go to print preview mode. And basically the little gray circles represent holes in the circuit board. And usually they're white. And so they've got holes. So you stick little single strand wires in the holes and you make connections. Well, behind the white board, there are connections. And when for the power circuit, what you see is the rail, and there's one or two usually at the top, but the whole line of the circuit board is all interconnected. All those dots are connected, all those groupings. And at the bottom, if you've got it oriented this way. Okay? All right, for the center part, and they're dotted lines because you can't see them. They're underneath the circuit board, but yet they are a circuit connection. And now for the individual components. Now what you see is these groupings of five in this column are interconnected and they're not interconnected to anything else on the circuit board and so you've got all these different points where you can set things up um, and then of course you got the one on the bottom okay circuit boards usually have that pattern there's usually a trough in the middle here between these and this is so you could put a IC chip across the ch the the uh, trough, and then it, it's perfectly made so it would fit, and you could breadboard IC chips. Okay, so that's how the circuit board is laid out and wired. Bigger circuit boards will have more squares. Some of them will have two lines. Some of them will have two sections like this depends on what you have but they're all laid out pretty much like this so once you get this pattern down and you realize what's going on you're in good shape now we want to build a circuit of course and one of the circuits we've been wanting to build is a 14 volt source going through a 6.8 and 10 and 20k in parallel and we want to make sure we do some current measurements and we want to make sure we do some troubleshooting on this. So we're going to we're going to use this as our example. And this is what it looks like in LT Spice. Now if I go back to uh, the CAD program, now how could I lay this out on a circuit board? Okay, now I don't know if it'll help you or not if I get rid of that part and that part. So you're just looking at holes in the circuit board. So what I've done is I've come up with three different ways you can lay it out. So, and I did it this way because I am a firm believer in if the fewer jumper wires you use, the less likely you're going to make a mistake. Now what we realize from this grouping of five here is they're all connected up and down. So this is the Three, this is the wire or wire 2 on LT Spice where everything comes together. This one is coming off of the power supply and then this one and this one are actually going to ground. Now I set that up so I could turn on wires. There we go. So I set up my power supply for plus 14, I ran a wire into it, and I ran it up to this top one, and it becomes my plus 14 uh, rail, if you will. It'll be called a rail. And I ran my minus 14, which you can't really see good because it's because of where I position the text, to the bottom one. So I've got two wires coming in from the power supply going to the circuit board, and then I've got my resistors laid out such that um, I'm not having to use a jumper wire. Now, I'm a big fan of that because the fewer jumper wires you use, the less likely you're going to make an error. 
So this resistor would be the 6.8K. I didn't, I didn't bother to label them. And then this one could be the 10, this one could be the 20, or vice versa. They're both in parallel. So they're commonly connected on this end, and they're commonly connected on the other end. So that's what parallel combination would look like. Now, as part of building circuits, we want to be able to test them without physically or visually seeing what's going on with the circuit, particularly when I bug it. So, what I have done is I have turned on these three wires. So, I've run three wires to these three holes. They're not interconnected. They've got to be isolated. And so my minus 14 is my reference or my zero from LT Spice. And this is my uh, test point for node one, which is the battery. And this is my test point for node two, which is where all the resistors come together. And if I go back to Spice, you can see, okay, I've got a one from battery to 6.8. I've got a two where everything joins together, and then my reference all goes back to the zero. So that's one way to do it. Now the nice thing about a circuit board is there's many ways to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my test point wires. I do want you to run test points because I ultimately we want to bug these circuits and I will we'll bug circuits in the future and you will take your voltage measurements test point one reference to zero and test point two reference to zero and then if I put a fault in your circuit and you build a fault code uh, you build a fault table then you can tell me exactly what the fault is even if you can't see the resistors. So you can't find the fault by looking at what I changed on your circuit. What you'll have to do is go by the voltage readings and tell me. Because I can put a covering over the circuit and cover all this part. So we'll always have test points. We want to get used to building those. So I'm going to turn off test points one. And I'm going to turn off my parts one. I'm actually going to leave wires on because in all three of the circuits I did I left the plus 14 and the minus 14 in there. So now an alternate way to do it is to put my resistors into a configuration that looks like that. So I've got my 14, I've got my 6.8K here, it goes down and it joins these two and I've got the legs from these two going into a common um, column here so they're they're all connected they're all connected the problem is I'm not connected to my 14 or my minus 14 so what I have to do is I have to go in and say okay what wires would I use to make those connections and I would need two. I would need a jumper wire from this top rail down to this row. You can't put them in the same hole. Sorry I did that. When I was making the video I caught it. You'd have to put it in one of these other holes in the column. But now you know I'm human. And this one, same thing. One of the holes in the column down to the bottom row. And this works perfectly fine. This would be an alternative way to do it. I'd still want you to run test points. Now in my first example, my test points were up here. I didn't feel like I had enough room, so I'm running my test points to a point on the circuit board that I can get to. I do try and order them test point one, two, and zero. Just as you go across. It's just I think it's easier to measure that way. You can, you can put them in any order you want, but then you got to keep track of what's what. So, test point one, test point two, and reference. And so, I could have come off of this to get my reference. And I could have come off my power rail to get my test point one. So, you, you've got an incredible amount of options. So, that is test point two and 
wires one two and parts one two well you don't like laying it out that way I understand that so let's look at this layout so this is what I see a lot of particularly with beginning students they just put their resistors into holes and so this is the lead coming off resistor it's going to this this uh, column and that column and they can they don't have to be flat they can stick up it doesn't really matter so if you just put them in the holes and then you go in and say okay what do my wires got to look like well I've got to use a few more jumper wires here now I was lucky enough to have these two in the same column but I got to get this one to that column so I had to use a jumper wire to go across the hole and again can't do that can't come out of the same hole as I did I'd have to come out of a different one uh, two things to fix I'll do it after the video in case I use this again so this jumps down to 14 this one jumps down to 14 you could jump these together and then jump it down to 14 again so many options the key is though that you get your circuit and it might help you to realize this is two and all my resistors have to be connected in two this is one and one end of this resistor has to go to the 14 <coughs> and this is the ground and this end of the resistor this end of this resistor and my ground all have to be tied together and that is what spice is showing you so whoops there you go okay now I want to run test points again okay test points run test points there you go so again test point one test point two test point three so that gives you the options you can build the circuit you should analyze any circuit before you build it make sure it's safe to build You're primarily looking at the wattage that each resistor is consuming and making sure it's not more than the resistor can handle and then when you build the circuit generally you want to run test points at least in the AC DC class you will want to run test points because we will want to test uh, you will want to test your circuit you will know you build it right when you're when spice V1 is equal to what you measure from TP1 to 0 and spice V2 is what you measure from TP2 to 0 so it's sort of a self check these test points that you built it right if you didn't build it right then that gives you a chance to to do some troubleshooting so I got that one in the same hole too okay anyway I hope this helps in terms of building circuit boards and we we will get started on that and doing some um, testing now I'll probably do the I'll probably do the uh, test it in class as far as uh, doing the current we want to do some current reading in class but I wanted to give you this in terms of hopefully helping you see how circuit boards are laid out alrighty hope this helps and I uh, thank you for watching oh I can stop it here right